Impact Wrestling presents Countdown to Bound for Glory. Welcome everyone, we are live and sold out here in Chicago for Bound for Glory. This is of course the countdown to Bound for Glory. I'm Tom Hannafin, joined by the drama king, Matthew Raywall. That's right, and this is worldwide, baby, and as such, let me introduce our French commentating team, Handsome J.F. and the one and only Mark Blondine. Hey, j'aime ça, j'aime ça, qu'à qu'il dit, le seul et unique, hein? C'est moi le seul et unique. Non, c'est moi, ça va être une soirée vraiment débile. Une soirée Bound for Glory, ici à Chicago, on a hâte de voir ça. Une soirée qui va être tout simplement incroyable. Ça, c'est certain, certain. Of Quelle course, soirée à venir. Of course, the countdown to Bound for Glory is all about the 2023 Impact Hall of Fame induction ceremony. We start things off first with a woman who fought for progress. The original knockout, Tracy Brooks. Ignited by a spark into creation. So when we started on this business, Tracy and I came up the road together, separated and went to different companies and then came back together again. And that was when we knew we wanted to fight for what we got into this business for, which was women's wrestling. And we knew that we were in the right spot to do that, to have the opportunities. Oh my God, Miss Brooks! She is a TNA original who pushed the boundaries of what was possible. There's 15 guys in that match, not one single girl. Simply put, there wouldn't be a knockouts division without her. She is one of the ones that laid the groundwork for the foundation that we've been building upon ever since. I think that when you talk about the evolution of women's wrestling, it's impossible to have that conversation without Tracy Brooks. And you look at what women's wrestling was when she joined this company, and you looked what women's wrestling was, especially here with the knockouts by the time she left, I think it's safe to say she's part of completely revolutionizing the industry for women. I did what I had to to survive in this business. Look at this! Look at this! Oh my God! Get water out! Get security in here! Get security in here to separate these two! This business isn't made for ladies. It's made for bitches like me. Tracy Brooks, best human being I've ever known. Wonderful spirit, beautiful on the inside as she is on the outside. Always puts others first. A, a wonderful human being, certainly the best part of me. Someone I've known for 30 plus years and has had my back through thick and thin and continues to do so. One of my favorite things about Tracy is that she snorts when she laughs. He's just an absolute sweetheart outside of the ring. Just one of the kindest, nicest, most caring, loving people there is. She was such a caring and compassionate individual and continues to be to this day. Tonight, we enshrine Tracy Brooks in the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. In my mind, she's already a Hall of Fame wife, she's already a Hall of Fame mom, she's already a Hall of Fame. When I got the privilege to announce to the world that she was going into the Hall of Fame, the crowd reaction that night said it all. You deserve it. Congratulations, Tracy. You not only deserve this, you have earned it. Congratulations from your old buddy, Eric Young. Nobody deserves this more. Your legacy now will live on forever. Congratulations, Tracy. Welcome to the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Mommy. You deserve it. I love you. mic right for you guys. Good evening, Chicago! Well, it is my honor to be able to induct Tracy Brooks into the Hall of Fame tonight. It would have been my one and only chance to bury her, but she does have her son here tonight who I truly adore and love, so I promised I would be nice. Um, but in all seriousness, I can say these things because we are just that close. 
Tracy is my sister. You know, finding the perfect words to say for her tonight was so tough. My friend, my confidant, my ex-roommate, and my former colleague. She was the first wrestler I met when I walked into that wrestling school in the year 2000. And let me just tell you, I was terrified. But to my pleasant surprise, Tracy was the first person I met. And I was put at ease. She welcomed me wholeheartedly. And let me tell you, as you saw in this video package, that's the type of person that Tracy Brooks is. Tracy Brooks did this for every locker room that she was a part of. Yes. We were literally married on that road together for that first year. Back then, not a lot of girls were wrestling, so we only had each other to lean on. And then later on, the great Beth Phoenix. Yes. I'm so proud of how far we've all come. And I think it has truly come full circle. Tracy showed me the ropes, booked us on all our shows together, and we experienced so much. And I would love to share all our adventures on the road together, but what happens on the road stays on the road. <laughs> but all I can say is I do have Tracy to thank. For me, after a night of fun, I had to purchase a whole new car. Yes, a whole new car. We experienced our first bikini contest together, which we hated. Our first hardcore match together, which we were both not told about and were terrified. I think we literally could have wrestled each other in our sleep after that first year. And we made it through together. Yes. <laughs> Tracy not only showed me the ropes, she taught me about respect in the wrestling business. She showed me that anything could be achieved and she pursued her dreams even with her physical limitations. She not only overcame this, but she really showed me the importance of every role in wrestling. Tracy was not only a wrestler, but she was a manager, an interviewer, a referee. She was the knockout law. And she is, was, and will always be the original knockout. So please help me in welcoming and congratulating Tracy Brooks for the induction into the 2023 Impact Hall of Fame. Um, thank you for not saying the whole car story. Um, and thank you, Eric Tompkins, for that incredible video package. So, growing up on a farm in St. Mary's, Ontario, Canada, my parents instilled a very strong work ethic. You work hard and you show up no matter what. If it wasn't for those lessons, I would have never made it through my first day of training. So, Mom and Dad, I love you and thank you so much. <laughs> to my brothers, Mike and Brian, thank you for always being there. And I am really sorry for all of my photo shoots. You know him as Frankie Kazarian. I know him as, honey, take out the trash. <laughs> I also know him as my best friend and love of my life. Frankie, thank you for loving me, supporting me, and believing in me. <laughs> Your dad and Killer Kowalski would be so proud of the man, the husband, and the father you've become. I know I am. <laughs> to my in-laws, Frank and Susie, I love you both. Rebel, dream big, because dreams do come true, buddy and you don't have to look any further than your parents. We were your age when we had this dream, and now your dad is in his 25th year of one of the greatest careers ever. And your mom, well, I'm the third woman to be inducted into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. So if your dream is to be the paleontologist, basketball playing engineer who wrestles, I have no doubt in my mind, buddy, that's what you'll be. I love you to the moon and back. Gail Kim, 23 years ago I met you, and I knew you'd be a star. 
What I didn't know is you'd be my favorite person to beat up. My roommate, my maid of honor, and Auntie Gail. Gail, this business brought us together, but we are sisters by choice. Ooh. October 14th, 2007, Bound for Glory. 10 women had a chance to shine. We didn't just shine, we lit up the whole damn sky. I am so proud to be the original knockout, and I am so proud of all the knockouts that have come after me and continue to raise that bar and make this the best damn women's division in this business. Thank you to my sisters, ODB, for the laughs that matches the cheap beer. <laughs> I wouldn't be the woman I am today without the journey. To SoCal Val, the beautiful people, Yay. Jackie Moore, yeah. Christy Hemi, <laughs> Beth Phoenix, Molly Holly, Lisa Marie, and Nikki James. As much as I love wrestling, I fell in love with being a valet. Being a valet meant I had front row seats to the best matches in Impact history. Thank you to my in-ring brothers, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, Shane Douglas, Matt Bentley, Jerry Lynn, Chris Saban, and Alex Shelley. And a very special thank you to Showtime Eric Young and Bob, sorry, Robert Rude. I loved Miss Brooks, but what I didn't love was losing a bikini contest to Showtime. <laughs> A special thank you to Off of the Wild Samoan and WXW, Rob Fuego, my Canadian boys, you know who you are, Terry Taylor, Dixie Carter, the Jarrett family, Eric Bischoff, Jim Cornette, Dutch Mantel, Tommy Dreamer, Bully Ray, and Dusty Rhodes. My today, Don West, you were the soundtrack to my career, and you made everything I did so much better. Congratulations. Liz Shinetti Edwards. Thank you for giving me what I didn't know I need, and that was one last match. And for Rebel to see his mom kick ass. Yeah. Scott Damore, I have you to thank for everything. My career, my family, and this honor. I don't know where I'd be without you. I love you, and you'll always be family. And that's what Impact Wrestling is, is family, past and present. So thank you to the current locker room, and to you, the fans. Thank you for cheering me when you loved me, booing me when you hated me, and thank you for letting this little farm girl from St. Mary's, Ontario, Canada. Oh. <laughs> you Official down. Tom, there is nobody more deserving of this honor than Tracy Brooks, her rightful place in the Hall of Fame. This is such a special night. The best of us are immortalized here as a part of the countdown to Bound for Glory. But up next, our original voices take their rightful place in the Hall of Fame. The foundation of any great song is the melody. The melody allows you to feel. It transcends all boundaries. It is what unites us all. God me, it, they are the voices forever linked as the soundtrack to Impact Wrestling. I'm Mike Tanay along with my TNA broadcast colleague, Don West. I don't think you can look at the history of TNA Impact Wrestling without talking about Mike Tanay and Don West. It's all about total non-stop action. I've got a mindset to take my headset off and go out there and get me some. You can't even begin to explain what this company feels like without Mike Tanay and Don West. That's a very hard thing in our business to have that level of chemistry. Polar opposites in so many ways, but on screen, on the microphone, gel perfectly. When I hear that voice or I watch old clips and Elvis Presley, you found him. Dollar beer night on Beale Street for Eric Young. It's not only nostalgia, but it's also remembering the life and, and the passion that they brought to the product. Mike Tenay was without a doubt the most astute and well-studied pro wrestling commentator I ever heard. They called him the professor for a reason because he just had extremely wide knowledge of professional wrestling. I, I think they really broke the mold with Mike Tenay in terms of being a guy that 
can express what's going on to an audience at home. I don't believe it! Kurt Angle's coming to TNA! It's impossible to talk about any wrestling promotion without having their true voices accompanied with that story. Don West, I mean, just energy. Don, uh, maybe the most enthusiastic man I've ever met. That's freaking unbelievable! You've got to be kidding me! 16,000 cards for only $6.99! Joe Montana signed this chicken skin. You've got to be kidding! You've got to be kidding! No one can do it like that. It's hole. got a chance. You've got to be kidding me! Tough break. Morning comes, new light and clouds are breaking. Dawn reveals our view. But the sun, it don't shine the way you do. The iconic voices of Impact Wrestling, The Professor, Mike Tanay, and Don West will forever be immortalized in the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Perfect. Mike and Don were the soundtrack to TNA Wrestling. No one deserves it more. Congratulations, my friends. A sincere congratulations. Congratulations, and thank you so much. Welcome to the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. I think that's it. it. I think that's it. All right, good job, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of Impact Wrestling, Scott Demore. Thanks, David. Congratulations to the original knockout, Tracy Brooks, on her Hall of Fame induction. She's earned it. At this time, it's my great privilege and my honor to introduce the next inductees in the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. To say that Mike Tanay and Don West were the voice of a generation for TNA Impact Wrestling would be an understatement. They were the tag team broadcasters here for years calling the action and giving their unique insights into some of the greatest matches and moments in company history, and dare I say, pro wrestling history. Their significance to this company can never be undervalued. The professor, Mike Tanay, and Don West, the over-the-top former sports cards collectibles pitch man, they were a dynamic duo on the air and true friends to myself and so many people in this company. I still remember my first day in TNA wrestling. After the morning production meeting, Mike walks up to me and he says, you're gonna fit in here great. And I can't wait for you to meet my broadcast partner. You'll love him. Mike was so right. The way Mike and Don welcomed me into this company was standard practice for those two. They welcomed everybody. Everybody loved Don and Mike. The wrestlers, the crew, the staff, and of course, all of you, the fans. One of my favorite moments, my favorite moments over the years was in 2006 when Mike, Simon Diamond, and myself went to the Chicago White Sox training camp with baseball great A.J. Pierzynski. <laughs> He's still polarizing. But hey, to be there with Ozzie Guillen and that whole team for sports nuts like me and Mike, that was heaven. But it was just one of a long list of great times that Mike and I shared. Mike was more than just the best play-by-play -play man in the business. He was a first-class roadmate. He was a valued collaborator, he was a mentor, and he was a dear friend. I don't think Mike gets anywhere near the respect that he deserves. Amen. Mike did more than just call the greatest moments in this company's history. He was a part of actively creating those very moments. 
And when I think about Don West, I think of his sense of humor, his hustle, and his passion. Like in Slammiversary in 2017, D.W. and myself had just returned along with company founder Jeff Jarrett. And we had a fan fest where we were going through a bunch of old TNA collectibles, including a jacket I had worn. But it wasn't just any jacket. It was one of only two Team Canada jackets I had ever worn on TV. As soon as Don heard that, he held that jacket up and he auctioned it offline right there and then. <laughs> and I tried to slow him up and tell Don, like that was, that's my personal jacket that I actually purchased. And Don didn't miss a beat. He shared that tidbit of info. He threw in an autograph from me for the highest bidder. <laughs> and I gotta say, hands down, Don West is the best salesperson ever in this or any other business. Trust me, he had to be, because he actually sold Scott DeMore memorabilia. I want to welcome Mike's loving wife, Karen, and his brother-in-law, Bill, and I'd also like to welcome here with us tonight Don's beloved wife, Terry, and so many members of the Don West family. Let's hear it for these families. And now let's keep the cheering going, and let's welcome to the stage to accept this honor on behalf of himself and our beloved Don West, the one and only, the Professor Mike Tenet. so much and thanks Scott. Thank you Eric Tompkins for that awesome video and thanks to everybody that participated. And isn't it fitting that we pay tribute to Don West right here in his hometown of Chicago. If you are looking for the definition of larger than life character, larger than life personality, look no further than Don West. TNA executive saw Don on that Shop at Home network. He was selling sports collectibles. And they thought that that over-the-top sales pitch would be perfect for TV wrestling. You know, Don had become so recognizable that Will Ferrell imitated him on Saturday Night Live comedy skits. And man, that is something that Don was so proud of. Don's wrestling announcing career got off to kind of a rocky start. Fans were reluctant to embrace him. Wrestling purists, and yes, there is such a thing, they thought that Don was just too much. You imagine too much for professional wrestling? But Don won them over. He studied the product. He learned about the wrestlers. And people soon figured out that that energy and enthusiasm, it wasn't manufactured, it was genuine. Don was universally loved and respected. When he passed, it was not only mentioned on Impact TV, but also AEW and WWE, two companies Don never worked for. And think about it. Quite honestly, that's just something that does not happen in today's political wrestling climate. Speaking of being loved, Don was even my son's favorite wrestling announcer. I was recently reminded that I gave my son, Eric, an autographed photo of myself. It said, to my son, from your second favorite wrestling announcer, signed, Dad. <laughs> you know, like many of you here tonight, Don, a huge fan of the Chicago Cubs, back to the Santo, the Banks, the Williams era. We'd always have trivia contests with baseball and sports questions. We ended up doing something like 500 TV shows together. We worked in the same company for 10 years, never a crossword, only good times. In the wrestling business, 
you end up with a lot of acquaintances, but very few true friends. And Don was that true friend. And let me tell you, it's so great to have his family here tonight. In addition to Don, I've been fortunate to share the broadcast booth with Dusty Rhodes, Gene Okerlund, Larry Zabisco, Taz, and of course my close friend Bobby Heenan, also who was born here in Chicago. Bobby had many fond memories of this city. You know, there was that night in 1975 at the International Amphitheater when wrestling manager Bobby Heenan, he so incensed a fan to the point that that fan fired a gun twice at Bobby Heenan. As Bobby told me, the shooter was never ID'd by anybody because Chicago really took that no snitching thing to heart. <laughs> you know, one night we were in New York for a nitro and hours before the show, Bobby and I were sitting together in the locker room. The fans were chanting Goldberg, Goldberg. That reminded him of Chicago. He would hear fans chant, we want blood. We want blood. And Bobby knew that those chants, they weren't directed at his opponents, Dick the Bruiser and the Crusher. They were meant for only one man, Bobby Heenan. I'd like to thank a few people if I can. Eric Bischoff, you took a risk. You put an inexperienced announcer on Monday Nitro. Eric can be a man of few words. He called and said to me, we're making Mongo a wrestler. You start Monday in Chattanooga, click. <laughs> of course, Mongo was Steve McMichael, yet another Chicago legend from the Super Bowl champion Bears. And Steve, we offer our support while you battle ALS. I want to thank the late Zane Bresloff, the greatest wrestling promoter ever, a man hugely instrumental in my career, a pair of father and son combinations, Jeff and Jerry Jarrett, who along with Bob Ryder founded TNA Wrestling. Thanks to David and Lou Sahadi, Lou always an inspiration to me. David, a friend, a co-worker for decades, he's the producer in the TV truck tonight. And of course, I have to mention Keith Mitchell, my producer for 20 years with both companies. I'd also like to thank Conan, who's here tonight. I watched and studied Lucha for years, for decades, but he took that education to another level. As a kid, I grew up at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles. I saw my all-time favorite wrestler, the Destroyer. The man under the mask, Dick Beyer, became one of my all-time great friends. Congratulations to Tracy Brooks on the induction tonight. And Tracy, the original knockout, just an honor to be with you. Most importantly, I want to thank my family. Of course, my son, Eric, his wife, Thea, my granddaughter, Kayla. She recently asked me if she now needs to refer to me as Mr. Hall of Fame. I told her it wasn't legally required, but it probably wouldn't be a bad idea if she wanted to be mentioned in the will. You know, when she was five years old, she would unsolicited tell strangers that her papa wears makeup at work. <laughs> the confused people would be looking for RuPaul and get Mike Tanay. <laughs> of course, thank you to my wife of 36 years, Karen, who offered unwavering support, encouragement while I was on the road for decades. She held it all together at home, honestly. She's the true Hall of Famer in the family. No question about that. Always nice to be recognized by your peers for the hard work, the dedication, and from both Don and I. Thank you, Impact Wrestling. Thank you, Chicago. And if I can, I want to pass the torch because I want to pitch to Tom and Matthew because they're going to tell you all about Bound for Glory. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much to Mr. Hall of Fame, the Professor Mike today. We're off to a great start. Chicago, are you ready? Let's do this. Bound for Glory starts now.